Yes, good afternoon everyone. Um, I'm Bri Robertson and I'm just going to kick start the, the session. Aaron and I will both spend a bit of time talking to you guys. Um, and as I said up here, we're just really presenting Mitigator. So a bit about myself. Um, I grew up not too far away from here um, on a dairy farm in Bulls. Um, yeah, not too far from here. And also studied not too far from here at Nessie University. So nice to come back to sort of the home area. Um, so I've always wanted to be in agriculture and I've done so uh, working with Balance uh, initially in the Taupo area supporting um, our farmers to make their uh, nutrient decisions, mainly around you know, fertiliser and using that and then have recently moved into the Farm Sustainability Services team here looking after our North Island team. So it's an exciting, um, yeah, exciting time to be within the Farm Sustainability team. There's a lot of um, pressure coming onto our farmers as I'm sure you're all aware so I might have to do my part to help and um, I think Mitigator, as you'll see throughout here, is doing its own part too. So I'll just pass over to Aaron to introduce himself as well. Yeah, I've got a mic on, so I'm a little to go. Um, hey, I've got a big title here. Basically, my role is about helping farmers with nutrient budgets and farm environment plans. Um, I'm from the Waitomo district, the North King Country. Um, probably about 80% sheep and beef farmers, actually. And I've worked in that area for a number of years. Um, helped a lot of people with their fertiliser programs over that time. I've been with Balance for 17 years. Um, and Balance has some really cool tools uh, to help in this environmental space, which we're going to, uh, I guess, showcase in, in this case study coming up. And the other name that is not up there is the person whose farm we're doing the case study on, and we better introduce him as well. He's a person called Graham Gleeson, and uh, he's, some of you may know him, he's a beef and lamb farmer councillor from the Northern North Island. Um, Graham's also involved with the Freshwater Leaders Group at the moment, um, hopefully helping out or sorting out or doing something in relation to the freshwater um, management policy that the government's involved with. Um, so Graham's really passionate about this space and it's been great to be involved with him, so some of that will come out in the presentation. Awesome. Just to sort of set the scene for what we're going to sort of cover off um, on the presentation today. So firstly, um, who the Farm Sustainability Services team are, so as you've heard both Aaron and I are part of that team and I um, just wanted to introduce them. Um, what is Mitigator, what you're all really here for, um, and then how does Mitigator work on farm in the context of Graham Gleeson's property, who Aaron's done a, a lot of work with, so that'll really bring, bring it together as to how does Mitigator actually work on farm. So just starting off with the Farm Sustainability Services team, so obviously we are part of, part of Balance, so still within the, the Balance um, umbrella, but a sort of separate part to that. Um, it was established um, about five years ago, originally down in the Canterbury region in response to sort of a lot of environmental compliance coming in there um, from Environment Canterbury and just wanting to support our shareholders um, through that process. Um, now sort of growing across just from, not just in Canterbury, across North Island um, and South Island as well, with the main hub still being in Canterbury and the Waikato region there. Um, quite a yeah, specialised team, a lot of backgrounds um, that come into the team, which is great. Um, yeah, but the expert users of overseeing CMA um, are qualified, so if not CMA qualified, working towards that. Um, on top of that, there's a lot of um, extra training within the team to be up to sort of individual compliance um, for specific regional councils. Um, we do a lot of work, and particularly my role is doing a lot of work with all those key industry stakeholders like Beef and Lamb here, um, DRNZ, particularly the regional councils, um, just wanting to get a sense from there where where um, rules may be heading so that we can um, inform that onto our, um, our farmers. So what services do we provide? Um, before I jump to that, I thought I'd just put up what we sort of see as our aim. Um, so what we really want to be able to do is to support the identification of risks as well as opportunity on uh, farmers' properties and be able to provide practical advice and solutions. So, Something that's actually going to work, work for you guys. Um, and within that, there's, I break it down to sort of four, four key sort of outputs that we work with. There's um, year end nutrient budgets, so you're probably all quite familiar with those being overseer um, nutrient budgets, uh, whether it comes through from um, 
yeah, milk companies always a precursor for Medicaid, which we'll hear about soon. Um, scenario and nutrient budgets, particularly in, in the Waikato region, there's a lot of work being done around nitrogen reference points and just the need to model those different farm systems. Um, farm environment plans and then mitigator, which is something that we've you know, obviously been recently offering and now starting to get out there in the industry, which is exciting. Um, just the, the history of, of Mitigator, um, so it's been a sort of 10 year, 10 year program um, since inception. Um, part of that's been a seven years part of a PGP project, um, so joint funded between Balance and um, Ministry of Primary Industries to the, to the sum of about $20 million, so not a, not a small um, project. Um, and as part of that, um, all the funding was really to focus on nutrient management and how to optimise um, nutrients. So, a couple of other key outputs I just want to put credit to as well is um, my pasture planner, may have known that as um, in Guru, um, and that's really about um, optimising the use of your nitrogen uh, on farm, um, right place, right time, right rate. Um, other thing would be um, Spread Smart, which is also an output from the PGP project, um, which is um, optimising the nutrients from the, from the sky, making sure that uh, it is being placed where where it should be, um, ability to build in exclusion zones and optimising them so that there's less wastage. Um, and then mitigate the key output that we're going to be talking about today. To meet bold new sustainability goals by 2025, New Zealand farmers need a breakthrough tool, one that will help them reduce their impact on the land and water. Mitigator is that breakthrough tool. Created by Balance Agri-Nutrients in partnership with Ag Research, Mitigator is a game changer for sustainable farming. Farmers can identify their risks in their business and be able to make informed decisions to help farm better in the future. Its gold standard geospatial software helps farmers make cost-effective decisions around reducing all four of the water contaminants, nitrogen, phosphorus, sediment, and E. coli. This world-leading decision support tool has been developed specifically for New Zealand farms by independent local scientists and is a breakthrough for sustainable farming. Look, I think the strength of Mitigator is it really paints a picture for you over the whole farm. Built on complex algorithms, Mitigator starts with a detailed farm map and uses customised soil, slope and overseer data to identify hotspots of contaminant loss. It then presents mitigation options with quantified impacts on these critical source areas. This gives farmers confidence that they are getting the most environmental impact from their mitigation investment. Mitigator is part of a broader farm sustainability services program delivered by Balance that's helping Kiwi farmers face the coming change with confidence. As New Zealanders, it's in our DNA to be kaitiaki, um, such that what we do in the land, the next generation can be proud of us. By giving our farmers the decision support they need, we're taking another step towards our vision of a productive and sustainable future for New Zealand farming. Gives me a bit of a bit of a break from speaking, so hopefully that started to sort of introduce you to to what Mitigator is, how it might look on farm, and just some. Um, some, some key words from some of the um, original farmers who we worked through the mitigator with. So just some key points that I'd like to pull out of the, I'll just pull out for you guys too, is that it is a farm scale um, tool, so it works on your farm, um, not at a catchment level, it's on your specific farm, your farm data. Um, it's a decision support tool, so the aim is for that to help you to make um, decisions on farm around where best to um, put your money um, into reducing nutrients, how to target them. Um, it was developed in conjunction with Ag Research, um, along with that um, MPI funding that we talked about. Um, provides a spatial and quantified overview of four key contaminants, those being nitrogen, phosphorus, sediment, and E. coli. Um, and yeah, being, being spatial, it is, it is your farm, it's in that particular block, it is um, it's your soil type, your slope, um, your farm. Inputs that we're required to run the mitigator program start with a digital farm map and an overseer nutrient budget. And what this is really key is it's you know quality, quality in gives quality out. So we spend quite a bit of time 
um, on having that overseas nutrient budget um, as accurate as possible and a really good digital farm map. And then the three key outputs of Mitigator are your risk maps, which Aaron will go through in a lot more depth um, in Graham's, on the context of Graham's farm. And these are really highlighting, um, a starting point for highlighting where those critical source areas sit on your farm and where the highest losses for those four contaminants are coming from. It then has a mitigation scenario component and that's really delving into on those critical source areas, what are some mitigations that would be applicable to apply, to be applied here and what would the cost be, what would the benefit be in terms of uh, reduction load. And then pulling that together into a comprehensive farm environment plan so in that farm environment plan can yes, be used for compliance, but also some really great decision making just in terms of how you're managing your farm, where crops might have been placed, those sorts of decisions. As you'll see that Graham's um, managed to use in a few different ways. And the last slide from me, um, just going to delve into, in particular into the mitigation part of, of Mitigator. Um, so just a bit of a definition there as to what, what is um, I guess a mitigation, quite a buzzword, um, but really it's just actions that can be taken on, on your farm, on the farm, to reduce contaminants entering the waterways. Uh, within Mitigator there's currently 24 mitigations that are built into it, um, with the potential to be, to be added to um, based on there being sound science there. So some mitigations are directly applicable to particular farming systems, so just ones around sort of deer wallowing, um, so you might have to deer, um, but the majority are applicable across all, so think stream fencing, riparian planting, um, sediment traps, pole planting, um, obviously a bit of a list, 24 of them, and the ability once you've identified what those mitigations are, great outputs around what is the, what is the cost of it, what is the reduction load, and what is that therefore um, costing you per kg of nutrient reduction. Um, and there's the ability in here to change those cost structures too. So it'll automatically have costs, but um, there's the ability to input your costs if you've got fencing or a contractor that you can um, that you can get on board to do for a couple of boxes of beer, then you can put that in there if you need to. Um, and ultimately it's just trying to give you the confidence to target, um, I guess to identify where your losses are target um, mitigations and know where you're going to get the best, best bang for your buck. So I'm just going to pass on over to, well not pass over, sure. but pass over to Aaron. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you Brighton. So now let's talk about, um, I guess a real farm, real case study. This, this, is, this is Graham's farm. Um, Graham is probably three quarters surrounded by water. He's got Lake Arapuni on his eastern boundary in the Mangari stream on his north and west boundary. Um, like a lot of sheep and beef farms, he's a mix of contour. Um, he has some easy and steep hill country, 96 hectares, and he has some fantastic uh, flat to rolling country up on the top. Um, Graham runs a breeding enterprise on this property, or two breeding enterprises actually. Um, he's a Coopworth breeder, and he also runs a Red Angus cattle stud. Um, he's focusing on the Coopworths, and uh, the cattle have a place there as well. One of the consequences of his breeding operation, of course, is with progeny testing and that sort of thing, um, the lambs are on the property for a long time over the summer. And uh, one of the consequences of that is actually runs quite a high stocking rate. Um, so when we modelled this, it came out at 18 stock units per hectare. And we looked at it and we sense checked it and we talked to others and we ran it through farm maps, but that's what it was. It's pretty intensive. Um, right, because Graham farms in the Waikato, uh, he has to, at some point in the future, deal with a thing called Healthy Rivers, which is the Regional Council's plan change. They call it Plan Change 1. It affects the Waikato and the Waipa River. It's all about water quality in the Waikato and Waipa Rivers. Um, 
One of the things that's facing Graham is the calculation of a nitrogen reference point, which is using Overseer to model his nitrogen outputs from the farm, and uh, potentially he'll be benchmarked that benchmarked on that. Uh, that plan is under submission at the moment, so we don't know what the final outcome of all that will be, but that's kind of where it's sitting at the moment. One of the other consequences of that, uh, that he is farming in the Waikato catchment, is that uh, he will have to produce a farm environment plan at uh, some point in time. So, yeah, a little bit of context there. Um, so, in terms of this case study, when Graham approached us, um, he said, well, okay, there's a couple of things that I need to know about my property. What is my end loss? Um, what is my end loss if I run different enterprises on the farm? Um, and he said, hey, look, I already have a farm environment plan. Um, some of you, if, you, if you know Graham and have seen his farm environment plan, it's pretty comprehensive too. But he said, what can mitigate a do for us as well. Um, so we started the journey and it's been quite a journey. I'll put this up here. Um, this was part of the submission to uh, the Waikato Regional Council um, and looking at in terms of the end loss across this farm. Um, Kind of put this up there because we need overseer to run mitigator anyway, and this was part of the work that we done around um, the mitigator model. Uh, once you start getting into this stuff, it can be quite a partnership between a number of people within the industry. Um, so uh, Graham got us involved, along with um, he needed a really good quality map of his farm to run mitigator. So that's where GPS it came in. Um, Balance has a relationship with GPS it, and uh, so we were able to kind of help that happen. Um, in terms of the different scenarios that he wanted to run on the farm, he said, well, hey, look, I've got this piece of land. What other things could I do on it, and what's the impact? That's actually where he got AgFirst involved to do the Farmax um, modelling, that sort of thing, to look at the, I guess, the returns from the different enterprises so they could potentially run on that land. And you could do all of those different things on that piece of land. Um, and then we got involved with the overseer modelling and then leading into the mitigator process. So, um, okay, it's quite a range of numbers there. Um, his existing farm was, you know, came out at 19 kilos of N per hectare, right up to the dairy and forestry options, about 35 kilos of N per hectare. Uh, yeah, and then we moved into Mitigator. Now, don't try and take all of that in. It's a complicated slide. Um, but I put it together to kind of show the relationship between a farm environment plan, a land and environment plan. So over on the left-hand side, um, some of you will be familiar with the Beef and Lambs land, land and Environment Plan. And there's a number of sections in that document or on that process um, that you can use to I guess quantify um, you know things in relation to environmental planning on the farm. Um, over on the right hand side we've got a farm environment plan. In the middle uh, there's inputs and things that we can do in terms of what balance can do and what we can do in terms of the farm sustainability team um, that can actually go either way. They can go into a land and environment plan or they can go into a farm environment plan. It's, it's kind of like choose the bits that work best for your situation and um, we can make it work for you. But certainly in terms of farm sustainability team, what we're doing with Mitigator was we're doing risk maps and um, scenarios. So, so the process, just to talk about the process, what I want to do is just talk about the, the process that we've gone through with Graham and drill down into some of the outputs from um, Mitigator. So obviously if you're going to write a farm environment plan or scenarios or do something on the farm, a good idea is to go out there and visit the farmer and have a bit of a look around so you know what you're talking about. So that was number one. 
get out there and find out what um, Graham's goals and objectives were. Um, we identified a lot of farm features on the farms and that sort of thing. It's nothing like getting out on the farm and having a look at it in terms of seeing what those slopes look like, um, what its resources are in there in terms of its water system and its laneways and all those sort of things that um, are part of the landscape on a farm. Um, we had a good chat about the work that Graham's already done on the farm and what he's planning to do. Um, he's already done quite a bit of riparian fencing and he's looking at putting on a wee forestry block along there. Uh, there's a steep slope and he pointed it out to me as we're going up the driveway. Um, hey look, it's kind of facing the wrong way. Um, I never put cattle on there. I just run all the sheep on there. I don't think it's that productive. I'll probably plant some trees on there. Um, and no farm environment plan is complete without lots of photos in it. So let's take a lot of photos while we're out there as well. So now I just want to look at, um, well, this is just an example on Graham's farm here. Um, I guess you, know, you can see some planting in the background there. That's some of the work that he's done. That's a couple of years old. And in the foreground here, um, See the, the fence posts there, you probably can't quite see that they've got uh, two or three wires on the top there. So, so what Graham's done is fence that out. So he's going to plant that, there's a bit of a gully there, drops down, and uh, he's going to plant that this winter. But what he's done is just fence the top wire so the sheep can actually graze down at the moment and he's keeping the cattle out there. And um, that's an area that we've modelled with a mitigator, so let's put that picture up there to start building a bit of context. So, okay, so we've got a nutrient budget, we've got a great farm map, um, now we've got to join it together with Mitigator. And remember, we're actually getting part way through the journey, we've still got risk maps and mitigations to go, but um, the first part of the, the journey is actually joining the blocks within a nutrient budget. If any of you are familiar with nutrient budgets and overseer, you'll have all the blocks listed there in terms of the hectares on the farm and whether they're steep or easy, etc., whether they're crop or not. So we've got to take that, um, I guess, information out of the model and put it onto a map. And that's what we're doing with this, allocating the blocks to the map. So I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably Graham Young runs a five year rotation of summer forage crops. Um, that are a mix of white clover, red clover, plantain, and chicory. And that's his good finishing tucker. Um, so each of those blocks have a little bit of a different environmental context, i.e., sometimes they're cultivated and then sometimes they're direct drilled in the autumn or over sown with more seed mixes. So they're all slightly different. Um, so they, those are sort of shown there and labelled. Uh, you get, get sort of orange, orangey, reddy colours. He has a winter forage oats crops crop on here as well for his breeding cows. That's the dark red area in the middle. And I guess all the green around the outside is, is his uh, easy to steep hill country. Um, there's two soil types on there, um, sort of showing the different coloured green. And that yellow area is actually going to remain an easier, easier country or cultivatable country. Okay, right. Okay, so now we've actually, we've joined Overseer to Mitigator. We've put some blocks on the farm with that Mitigator. Uh, now we can start generating some risk maps because we've taken the input from the Overseer model and overlaid it um, on the map. And sitting under that, there's a layer of slope and a layer of soil type. And now we can start looking at where the risks are on the farm in terms of nitrogen loss or phosphorus and sediment, sediment and E. coli. Um, Risk maps go further than that. They actually quantify the losses as well. Um, they show where the relative loss risks are on the farm for each nutrient. And okay, once you know that, it starts to inform where on farm you can take actions or have mitigations 
uh, that would be most effective. Um, one thing about risk maps, they are specific to your farm. The numbers are relative to your farm, um, and that's in terms of the colour coding and all that sort of thing. So, uh, we'll just go on to, let's have a look at one and see what one looks like. So, four risk maps, nitrogen, phosphorus, sediment and E. coli. Uh, I'll use the phosphorus risk map as an example, um, just to highlight a few key features of the risk maps. So, I guess up here, we're showing the relative risk areas of where they are on the farm. Those are the different colours on the maps. So, the pink area is the area with the highest risk, and if you you the contour of the farm, that kind of makes sense, it's actually the steeper country. Um, the dark blue area is the lowest risk area, and that's generally his you know, flat to easy country. So that shows where it is. Uh, the colours on the map match the pie graph, and you can see the graph. Then we start going into quantifying the loss, losses on a risk map. And so the graph actually shows the percentages. There's some numbers that are probably a bit hard to read there, but it shows the amount of loss within the diff different percentages. And then actually going down um, the table at the bottom is like a summary. It's the total loss on the farm and loss per hectare. Right, you're starting to know some real good stuff about your farm now, Some quantifying some things here. That starts to inform things like where mit mitigations might be most effective. Okay, you can start to see where the high loss areas are um, and where things might be able to go to do I'm something about them. Just going to add a comment on that too, and I guess mm. what I was trying to really bring to life is that the 80 20 rule where 80, well, not in this case, but it's 30% of your loss is coming from a heck of a lot less than 30% of the area. So, able to actually really target where those losses are, where most of them are coming from. And just a note too on the, on the colours that the, might think it's a bit odd to have the, the pinks and the blues and not your standard sort of. Um, red, green, blue, um, just trying to highlight that it's 10% of all males are colour blind, so trying to use colours that will not be, um, yeah, not be lost on something, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and just a, a little overview of the other risk maps. On Graham's particular farm, the average end loss was 19 kgs per hectare. Um, the highest risk areas in the pink there, that's the top map there, that's the nitrogen risk map, uh, that was the winter crop areas. So no, no surprises there, but that's kind of quantifying it or showing where it is. Um, the sediment risk map, uh, sediment loss on average is um, 900, uh, 590 <coughs> kilograms per hectare per year. Um, that's the average across the farm. Well, the greener areas on the slopes, uh, they were like 1.3 to 1.9 ton per hectare per year on the steeper slopes. Um, it was 66% of the farm. Uh, losses per hectare. <coughs> so let's say that 1.3 to 1.9, that's 130 to 190 grams per hectare if you want to put it down and sort of think about that, so you've got a square hectare of land, that's 130 to 190 grams being lost off that per year sort of thing, so maybe a quarter of a block of butter, maybe. Um, going down to the E. coli map on Graham's farm, that's a medium, which is shown in the green there, uh, to low risk of E. coli loss on the farm. That's because he's actually already done a lot of fencing of waterways and there's actually not a lot of areas where the animals can actually get access into the water system. Um, so those are risk maps and some numbers. I guess, what are the numbers on your farms? It's kind of like, you know, this is what this is all about. Um, so. This is a process you can actually go through to find out what your N or P or sediment or E. coli risks are on your farm. Um, and then Ten where minutes. are the risks? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Crikey. Okay. That's fine. Um, so, so we've got some risks on the farm. I've identified that. We've got risk maps. What do we do about it? This is where you start looking at actions or mitigations. Um, so okay, 
what actions have been taken or can be taken to reduce risks of contaminants entering, entering waterways on Graham's farm. Here's an example, this is the picture we've seen earlier. Um, so the process with the mitigator is we can put the cost of the mitigation into the model. In this particular example, we're looking at riparian fencing and planting. I'll touch on some of the other mitigations we've got on there. But in terms of the costs, we're thinking about the costs of fencing, you know, dollars per metre. Um, cost of the plants, dollars per square metre planted, for example, a maintenance cost. Um, if, if there was an interest cost, we could actually also put that in there as well. So, okay, costs, next part of the process, this is geospatial, I think we heard that word at the start, this is where this all comes in, this is the mapping stuff. You can go in and that light blue area there, that's defining the catchment, and then you can put a fence around it, uh, which is the dark line around the outside. So that's modelling what Graham's going to do on that piece of land. Okay, so now we've modelled it and put some costs in. What does it actually look like in the model? This is about loss reduction, reducing the amount of nutrient loss. I should say that actually, in terms of this mitigation, in terms of um, riparian planting and fencing, we were looking at, looking at the phosphate loss reduction. Uh, there is a slight reduction there um, on this particular area. Uh, the different colours, uh, I guess the orange is where the greatest loss is in that particular area. And the dark blue is the, the least loss. Um, really important point to note is that the load reduction impact is relative to the size of the load, i.e. how much risk there is there to start with, um, the area that you're going to apply the action to um, and times the effectiveness of whatever action or mitigation that's going to be. So, um, I guess, yeah, large risk, large area, um, high effectiveness, you'll have a big impact, reverse, reverse that low, low risk, small area, um, not much effect, you, you'll have a less of an impact and that's like So, yeah, some of the context around that. Okay, so that was just one example of how we model a mitigation in the model. Um, some of the other things we looked at on the farm, plantation forestry, stream fencing and planting, um, on agroforestry, it's supposed to be another point there, speed, space pole planting, uh, we looked at reducing fertiliser inputs, restricted grazing of crops, wetlands, contour plant. There's a heap of things we looked at on his farm. And we, as a result of that, um, one of the outputs is, okay, where are we going to do all these things on the farm? Uh, this map shows where all the different actions uh, could take place. Uh, the blue areas there are defining the catchment at the bottom of the catchment um, in theory, we could construct some wetlands to capture runoff, that sort of thing. So, um, another output of Mitigator um, is we start quantifying it in terms of percent loss reduction, in terms of nitrogen, phosphate, and sediment. Um, and then we also do a, an output which is um, the, the price per hectare of the mitigation over here, um, times the hectares, it's cost, cost per, cost of that mitigation, and the cost effectiveness, which is the cost of the mitigation divided by the load reduction output there. So with, with that information, um, hey, it's a whole lot of numbers, but with that information, you can start ranking your mitigations on the farm as to what's the most appropriate thing to do. So just following on from that, just um, where does it all fit? I guess, hey, we've talked about risk maps and um, mitigations. Um, actually, in terms of those mitigations, we put them into a scenario and compare different scenarios within the model as well. But those, 
outputs from mitigator can go into a land and environment plan or they can go into a farm environment plan. Kind of the same thing, different, different words, won't get too hung up on that one. Um, so, a few final words here. Um, actually, just, just on some of these things that we, we have done some work on farms on, a um, couple of comments from guys. Uh, one of them's actually taken the risk maps and it's actually become quite a great, a great conversation tool within this farming team. And um, so he tells us he's actually changed his whole wintering management on his farm because he knows so much more about it now. Um, oh, what was the other one? There was a guy that had completed some uh, mitigations. He was actually thinking that he was going to do a constructed wetland. That's what he was going to do. We modelled a mitigator. He actually ended up doing some riparian planting because it was actually more effective than the wetland. So, um, yeah, just a few summary words there. Um, so it's a tool to help farmers. Um, farm environment plans seem to be coming towards us across the country. Um, it's a model that models, I guess, all the four contaminants that we talk about in terms of water quality. Uh, it, it provides a flexible plug approach. So it's not something that says you should do this or that sort of thing. You can mix and match things in there and you can tailor it specifically to your farm. So that's Mitigator. Thank you. Thank you guys. We've got a few more, just a few more minutes now for, for questions. So um, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask, far ahead. Can I just like move it down for questions? I'll, I'll kick things off if you like. I'm, I was just going to... Um, at, at the beginning, um, you showed some models around uh, the different nitrogen loading. Um, for different farming policies, my words. Um, and I was quite interested to see that the um, introduction, introduction of forestry into different scenarios didn't appear to reduce the nitrogen loss. And I was surprised yeah. that given the A, the land area has been taken out of the um, agricultural operation, um, and B, presumably there's some less perhaps, stock on the property. So, so that also had some maize inputs into that scenario to counter the fact that some land had been, oh, did I that right? Yeah. Yep. Some land had been taken out. Um, and if the forestry wasn't there, actually those end loss numbers would have been quite a bit higher. So that would actually brought those down a bit. Yeah. From your first meeting to basically where you are now, Providing a plan, um, what was kind of time frames and stuff like that? Um, it's a little bit hard to this. This this is actually drawn out longer than it has because it's built. What, what will you be hoping for? Oh, we'll turn around. Take it right from I guess depends too whether you're sort of starting with starting afresh if you've got the nutrient budget, but probably looking at a good from nutrient budget right through to a full comprehensive farm environment plan, sort of probably thirty hours. 20, 30 hours, quite a big chunk, yeah. And that involves a couple of farm visits, sitting down with the farmer, reviewing, um, yeah, it's a very, yeah. That's quicker than I thought. Oh, okay, oh, that's good. <laughs> Sometimes I was like, oh, that's like two days almost. <laughs> yeah, two full days, but yeah. yeah. So. What would be the hope, what I couldn't really oh, see that, like, but you might have, no, but, so, um, what what would be the overall area that was taken out of production on that property as a percentage of the property? It might have been in those numbers, I couldn't see them. And what would have been the effect of all those mitigating um, factors on the overall production of the property? Yeah, so this journey is at a point in time and we actually haven't had that discussion yet and in this case we are at the point where we're modelling the, the various options, some of them in terms of the forestry and the riparian planting, that's ongoing and it's going to happen. Uh, there was five hectares taken out with the forestry on 173 hectares. Um, 
the constructed wetlands don't actually take out a lot of area, so if he went with that, then um, that wouldn't have a huge impact. Um, space to pole <coughs> planting of poplars, uh, that probably, uh, yeah, that probably wouldn't be a huge area. Um, so on that map, it looked like they were perhaps bigger areas there, but that was the catchment that was actually shown here as well. Um, that map also showed, um, it was quite a big, you may not, or you might recall it, quite a big brown area in the middle there. That was simply mapping where he would reduce phosphate inputs. So it's actually not taking any land out, it's just re reducing the inputs on that land. So off the top of my head, the biggest loss that I can think of at this stage would be that five hectares of um, forestry that's going to, that he's going to take out. Yeah. Did that drop his production? Did that drop his production? Um, we haven't modelled that. We're probably that's probably going to to the next step and saying, okay, I've taken five hectares out. What's the reduction of my stocking rate? It's probably going back into Overseer or Farmax to model that again and seeing what sort of impact that would have. Seems to be like it wasn't, wasn't a very productive area. Yeah, yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah. All right, sorry guys, but I have to wind it up. Uh, look, thank you, Brian and Aaron, very much for your presentation. Uh, it's both interesting, but more particularly, I think, going to be of increasing relevance for our industry as time goes on and different regional councils progress uh, their sort of water plans, etc. Uh, look, thank you very much on behalf of everyone. Um, if you'd like to make your way towards your next um, group, you've all got a program in there, so you can read it as well as I can. Um, and, and you guys are going to be here during the networking, so there'll be an and, and as the day goes on, so there'll be the opportunity to catch up with any further questions. Um, so thank you very much. And I've got some more gifts for you guys.